we start a yet again exciting and saucy journey. This time we are taken to New York, Manhattan, USA. We get a notification stating the start of demotion prevention. Citizens wearing armors and holding medieval weapons are looking at something high above with troubled expressions on their faces. The mission that they were instructed is to defend something. Then all of a sudden, a humongous void appears out of thin air with a terrifying monster trying to come out from it. Another notification prompts saying summoning monster of the end, the behemoth. Its leg comes crashing down the city streets, destroying the roads from the impact. The earth trembled as it descends, leaving all the defenders shaking in terror. They stare at it with terrified eyes, mumbling that it is finally here. We get to see the horror-inducing size of the behemoth, the world ender, as it crouches down to look at the puny humans. They would have to defeat the behemoth before it ends the world. Now that its full body has exited the portal, it lets out a harrowing scream as it prepares for carnage. The defenders did their absolute best to compose themselves, while the leader commands them to stay in formation and prepare for battle. Should they fail this seemingly impossible task, the world will end as we know it, and humanity will be erased from existence. Battle.net began in 2010. At first, it was just a competition between nations, but everything changed when Space League opened up in 2022. A fight for survival against other creatures in space began. Earth's representative, humanity, continued to lose. It is now 2023, and there are only 10 nations remaining on Earth, putting it at risk of total destruction. The behemoth opens its mouth and gathers dark energy at its opening, like a preparation of a hyper beam in Pokémon. All the defenders are helpless as they watch the behemoth unleash the unparalleled energy upon them. Everyone has the same exact thought at that moment, that it is the end of them. Suddenly, an unknown entity propels itself in the air, leaving behind a sonic boom at its wake. Then we see a plain-looking dude, floating high above in the air. The behemoth notices his presence and shifts its attack towards him. The plain-looking dude has a calm expression in his face while he looks down on incarnation of Armageddon itself. He then disappears out of thin air with his lightning-fast movement. Just in the nick of time as the behemoth hyper beams him into oblivion. In that instant, he already has closed the gap between him and the monster while he is preparing his fist to knock it down. Not even in a fraction of a second, he punches the monster with a force so strong that it reverberated through the whole place. It was so strong that it managed to knock the giant down flat into the ground. The bewildered spectators shielded themselves from the countless of rubbles flying into their directions due to the impact. As the aftermath of the punch starts to calm down, they slowly open their eyes to see what had just happened. Their knees lost its abilities to stand straight up, causing them to fall to their butts on the ground from shock. A notification pops up stating that Earth, USA, has accomplished the given task. This soul man was able to defeat the behemoth all on his own, and with single punch at that. The leader was able to recognize the plain-looking dude. He admires his prowess and calls him the Martial Saint. Seong Jihun, affiliated with American First, World Player Ranking 7th, praises the leader for his excellent work at keeping calm. A group of people is seen atop of a skyscraper, and one of them declares that their beloved nation, America, has won once again in this battle for survival. This historical moment will be remembered by all the citizens and their master, Baron, as he himself proclaims. Baron Williams, American First Guild Master, World Player Ranking First, a tall blonde man with a physique built like a tank, stands confidently. One woman among them leaps off the building worried about Jihan, while the other members tell her that she can't go down right now. They address the girl as a priestess. The other members are worried for her safety because the behemoth's energy is still rampant on the surface, but Baron tells them that she will be fine. The first ranker thinks to himself that the behemoth sure is powerful. Just the energy coming from its corpse is enough to make most players pass out. It surely must have been incomparably stronger when it was alive. But to endure standing next to it, let alone fight it, Siang Jihan is really something else. Sophia, affiliated with American First Guild ranking third, is visibly worried about Jihan's left arm. She instantly casts a regeneration spell on him in an effort to heal him. The priestess explains that the healing will be indeed painful because of the behemoth's evil energy but Jihan just has to hold on a bit longer. And Jihan did just that. The excruciating pain is obvious on his face but he does his best fighting it. While the recovery is in progress, a something shiny catches the attention of our hero. The people above the skyscraper tells Baron about the shiny object beneath, while Baron stood there certainly interested as well. The peculiar shiny chest is the boss's reward. 
a magnificent golden chest, reward that is befitting for defeating such monster. From the distance, Baron commands the two to back away from the reward, and their expressions show how concerned they are with his order. With an imposing tone of voice, Baron declares that he will manage the reward, even though he did absolutely nothing. Even the spectators know that with this kind of act that Baron is putting, everyone will think that he is the one who subjugated the monster. But they can't voice out their concern, for in these times where humanity is on the brink of extinction, those guys are their only real hope. The leader Baron shouts that American first, and he will be the one in charge of distributing the rewards amongst the guild members. All the guild members acknowledged in unison, except for our hero and the priestess. He named everyone who will receive the rewards, and Jehan's name wasn't on the list even though he single-handedly killed the monster. This made the priestess took courage to disagree. She states that Jehan was the one that killed the behemoth, so it is only just that he should receive a reward. When asked why he wasn't giving our hero his well-deserved reward, Baron's expression turns stern. He points toward Jehan and states that he isn't an American so he won't be receiving any loots. Baron explains that even if Jehan has already been naturalized, he is still not a real American. To him, our hero is nothing more than a useful dog. That kind of nonsense reason is not sitting well with our kind-hearted priestess. She tries to debate but our hero, with his arm still missing, tells her that it is fine. He tells her that he doesn't care about the rewards or the treatment that they are giving him as he walks away. He considers himself just a refugee who ran away after losing his motherland. As time passed by, he has obtained an SSS rank skill, the Nameless Divine Arts, an SSS skill that is passed down through fragments. And with the skill he has acquired, he managed to climb up the world rankings and ended up being the seventh strongest. Despite that, he was still not recognized as an American and experienced all kinds of discrimination. But all of those mentioned hardship was the least of his problems. The thing that has been eating his peace of mind is something different. He carries the burden and guilt of being the only one to survive from his homeland. In spite of the pain and abuses he has just experienced, he closes his eyes and tries to calm his mind. He focuses on healing his arm so he can recover quickly. Anytime soon, he will get his mission results. It was then that a notification catches the attention of our hero, stating that he game has ended and the system will now be announcing the results of the Bronze League demotion mission. The mission category was defense, and the clear condition is to survive with more than half the players, and the USA was able to complete just that. The country of China successfully accomplished the given task as well. But unfortunately, the two were the only ones to do so. Russia, Japan, and other countries all failed the impossible mission. Everyone can't believe their eyes as they stare at the notification. Only two out of the ten remaining countries succeeded. As a result, the system deemed humanity losing the demotion prevention. The system tells them that since there are other players have lost the demotion prevention, humanity will have to go against number 4773 orc in the final demotion decision battle. Everyone's reactions are the same. They all looked worried and visibly don't want to fight against such monsters. The priestess tells Baron, who has a troubled expression on his face, that they need Jehan's power if they will fight against the orcs, since it was Jehan who led them to victory the last time. But being the proud man that he is, he says that they won't be needing him this time and will go without Jehan, as they get transported to another place. Another notification appears prompting that summoning representative players of each planet. Battle will begin soon. Humanity's representatives and the orc race representative were teleported in an arena suspended in space. Baron looks at their opponents with absolute loathe and anger. He calls them disgusting pigs and tells them that it has been a while. The team of humanity consists of Baron, the priestess, two of the American guild members, and one Chinese ranker. A leader clenches his fist, and with determination, he says that they don't need Jehan's power this time. He is absolutely confident that he can do this alone, as he powers up and starts emanating strong aura. With his enormous energy, he starts floating in the air and taunts the pigs to come at him. He boldly declares that he is the representative of humanity, then charges recklessly towards the enemies. Baron screams with full conviction, ready to dish out his most powerful attack. But in an instant, an orc attacks him with comprehensible speed and lands behind Baron. All the other representatives were frozen in shock. They can't believe what they have just witnessed. Even the people left in the earth, watching the event, tries their best to hold their vomit back. Jihen stood up. He was also surprised, watching what has just transpired. From that single attack, humanity's first ranker finds his head rolling on the ground along with a notification saying that a humanity player has died. Everyone on earth is horrified. They were not expecting the orcs to be this strong. 
Despair has started to engulf humanity. One representative gets sliced clean in half. Humanity player has died. Another one gets stomped into nothingness. Humanity player has died. They all gets massacred one after the other. Until finally, the priestess is the only one left, lying on the ground, at the mercy of the orcs. The monster raises its battle axe and thanks the humanity for being weak, saving them from certain destruction. And with that one final attack, the game has ended. Number 42 12 Humanity Haste Lost and is demote from the Bronze League. There is no lower league than the Bronze League. So, number 4212 Humanity has been deemed worthless. Worthless number 4212 Humanity will be expelled from the Space League. Dark Ominous Portal started to appear on the ground, marking the beginning of deletion. The portal grew into a large void that swallows the humanity whole. Even our boy Jihan is no exception from the punishment, as the dark energy starts pulling him down. This truly marks the end of humanity. The void grew enormously enough to begin swallowing the planet Earth. Everyone starts pleading for someone to save them, as they were engulfed by despair and hopelessness. And just like that, humanity has been erased from existence. But there was an error that has occurred while the deletion was in progress. There are still humans remaining. We see a single person floating in nothingness, while glowing like a galaxy. It turns out, Jihan's divine art skill is resisting the deletion. He thinks to himself that he is the only one to survive again. Aimless divine arts resisting the deletion catches the interests of those who runs the system. How could one skill go against the system? Seeing how powerful his skill actually is, he thinks if things would have turned out different if he had been able to upgrade that power. The overseer says that the being, pertaining to our hero, is weak but has potential. They cannot overlook any possibilities, and they started wondering if they will give him another chance. Jihan wondered if he had known the real name of his skill, would Korea still exist, and would he have been able to protect the people that he loves. The overseers took their votes if they will give our hero a second chance, and in the end, the decision is that the player Seong Jihan will be returned to the league's first entry era. He suddenly wakes up, and finds himself lying on the comfort of his couch. Jihan gets up. He holds his head as he endures the pain of hangover while bottles of alcohols are scattered around. He tries to process what has just happened. He definitely read that he was going back to the league's first entry era. Jihan begins to scan his surroundings, and it seems like this is a familiar place to him. Too familiar even. He wasn't taking any chances though he needs to verify it even more. Our hero goes to the window and opens the curtain to check the outside. Then he was surprised on what he sees. The place that he was longing for, Korea, is right in front of his eyes. He was transported back to the year 2020. On one view, he sees children playing pretending to be the Sword King Yoon Sejin. On the other side, he sees a couple nonchalantly flirting in the streets. It is really looking like an ordinary life that he had back then. His eyes began to widen as he realizes that he is back to his beloved country, which he thought would be gone forever, once again. Immediately, he opens his status window, and it shows his name, Seong Jihan, and states that he is still on level 2. It is when he first entered the league. After all the overwhelming reality has settled down on his mind, he breathes a sigh of relief and hope. This would be the perfect opportunity for him. He can use all the information he has gathered in his previous life. And with those, he can change the future. No, scratch that. He must definitely change the future and protect everyone this time around. This time, everything will be different. He has witnessed the end of this terrible reality game. And now, with his memories intact, he is back. In the year 2020, Korea still had a solid standing. Among the world's top players, there were 11 considered to be the best. And among those 11 players, there was one that was protecting third place. In a flash, one individual managed to attack five different rankers without them being able to react. And with just a fraction of a second, the said rankers were eliminated as the lone swords man strikes a victorious pose. The very reason that Korea was unshakable was because of this man, the sword king, Yoon Sejin. The pride and treasure of Korea. Thanks to his participation as the strongest warrior, Korea was always able to retain the higher ranks within Northeast Asia. Everyone thought that it would be the case for as long as he was alive, but everyone was shocked with the following events. Yoon Sejin, Korea's proud and joy, have decided to change his name as Ruhei and become a naturalized citizen of Japan. In July 2020, he joined the new self-defense force. That was the day that Korean Battle.net received the biggest shock in its history. And it is the very day that our hero has returned to. After Yoon Sejin left, Korea fell into great chaos. Our hero watches the news with mortified face. The newscaster confirms that the Sword King has truly left their beloved country. And now, growing voices of concerns over the ranking of Korea within the league sparks concern. 
Korea, who had held up within the higher ranks thus far, faced repeated defeats and fell through the ranks within the league at a frightening pace. Despite all that, some analysts have mentioned that there shouldn't be a huge change within the rankings. He may be Korea's strongest, but he is still just one man. The country still has lots of promising bright young people, so they expect to remain within the top 20. Seong Jihan strongly disagrees with their mindset. He says that it is the very reason the country failed so badly. No one appeared to make up for the absence of Yoon Sejin. Things would have been different if there were a little more time, but the battle net was way too brutal. A notification stating the start of the Space League appears. While the battle net was just a game in the beginning, it became a war for survival two years later after the Space League began. If one lost their life in the game, they'd also lose their life in reality. Monsters would appear in the countries who fell to the lower ranks, and a one-sided massacre would take place. After Yoon Sejin left, Korea fell to the lower ranks as expected, and was eventually destroyed. Those who had survived gathered and began to say this, if the Sword King had stayed here, Korea would have had a different ending. That is just how strong and important the Sword King, Yoon Sejin, was. And it turns out, that the Sword King was our hero's brother-in-law which fueled the anger of Jehan towards him for leaving his own country to perish. Up until this point, he is still wondering why his sister love a bastard like that. And as he looks down with sadness in his eyes, he also wonders if things would have been different if his sister had been alive. The sun shines brightly, giving life to the surroundings. We see our boy looking worried even after returning to the past with his memories intact. It is revealed that he was making such a face because his stats are just way too pathetic. I guess it would be a shock to anyone, who was able to defeat the behemoth with just one punch, to see their stats as a beginner again. He tries to calm himself. This is within his expectations. In the past, he had been spending his time drinking and gambling away around. He didn't put effort into getting stronger. He laughs at his own past foolishness, since he didn't know just how incredible his certain skill is. The Wander's Eyes, a rank F skill that gives the user the ability to see the details of other players. We get an explanation about gifts. Everyone becomes a player when they turn 18, but only a small number of players were able to receive a gift. Those gifts differ in rankings and powers, and since our hero's gift was ranked F, he just used it on gambling that predicted the winner. Back then, he didn't know that the true value of his skill only reveals itself after the awakening. He looks at his stats once again, and it makes him think that they are really terrible. The stats he has are befitting to someone who is level 1. How come he is level 2 with those kinds of stats? And then it hits him. He remembers that he did something. He looks at the table and sees a spilled golden liquid, which is known as the X Potion. Some idiot drank it in a drunken state and leveled up. Our boy has no comment on that incident. Then he notices something peculiar. He has 100,000 achievement points, and he wonders where the heck he got those. Putting aside that they are useless and aren't worth any money, he doesn't think he had accomplished any achievements before he entered the league, so why does he have those? He considers the possibility of it being brought by the fact that he has regressed, so he opens the inventory. As he sees his inventory, he was shocked beyond belief, this is definitely something new for him. What did our hero see in his inventory that warrants such reaction? What steps would he take now that he has regressed to the past? Stay tuned for the next episode. That is all. Thank you for joining me on this Saucy Manwa journey. If you enjoyed the recap don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, stay saucy.